Hello, everybody. How you doing? I'm Wheezy, and if you're new to my corner of the internet, a warm welcome to Isabella Banks' YouTube channel. Here, we dive headfirst into the latest happenings revolving around Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan. So make yourself at home, and let's get into the conversation. A heartfelt thank you to all of you for your contributions in the comment section. Your remarkable civility while joining me in dissecting a potentially controversial view of the Sussex's dispute with the royal family was genuinely appreciated. <laughs> so guys, let's dive in. A special shout out to one of my commenters, Rising Phoenix. Your comment was a breath of fresh air. Especially the past where you mentioned everything you said makes sense. This is food for thought. Hats off to your openness to alternative perspectives. And the sprinkle of humor in your disagreement had me in stitches. Absolute gold. That is precisely what I was aiming for. After all, life is not really that hard. As we are about to discuss the Sussex's win, I think that the prayer on the screen is very appropriate. It says, I took my troubles to the Lord. I cried out to him and he answered my prayer. As the Sussex's appearances from August to October still have us buzzing, it's hard not to reminisce about those memorable moments. The Beyonce concert was a masterclass in reclaiming the narrative. It was a textbook example of what happens when you work with professionals. But the real showstopper was the Invictus Games. It was an absolute smash hit. The Sussexes knocked it out of the park. Yet, amidst the grandeur, I'd like to shine a light on Megan's visit to Fisher House during the family conference before the games. Tish Strobes of the Fisher House Foundation captured it beautifully when she said of Megan, she gets families. She's the spouse of a veteran. She has two small children as she knows what it means to be a family and she knows and understands these families. Megan also narrated a heartwarming video for the Fisher House Foundation, showcasing her interactions with the veterans and their families, supporting the foundation's mission to provide homes for military families during treatment. Now guys, let's go to the love fest Harry and Megan received at the Invictus Games. I must say, I'm both jealous and thankful for everyone who showed them love during the event. I am getting my act together so I can join the Invictus Games in 2025. Watch out world. The Italian team had a full circle moment with Megan as they were able to gift her an Italian football jersey. Given their claim about Megan years ago where they said, Megan is one of us. <laughs> And now let me just say something to the Italian team, okay? You're doing too much now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing too much. The Nigerian team has taken over, so you can put your flag down now. Okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm eternally thankful for my sister who had the opportunity to convey in person what every Harry and Meghan supporter's heart yearned to express to Meghan. And we mustn't overlook the subtle ways other European monarchies have shown support for Harry and Meghan. Like Her Majesty Margarita of Romania kicking off the Invictus Veterans Relay. The Invictus Games are making quite the impact. Thanks to God Almighty. Moving on, the next big project was Archie Wells Foundation Parent Summit hosted in partnership with Project Healthy Minds in honor of World Mental Health Day. Guys, Harry and Meghan stunted on the paparazzi and naysayers like the royalty that they are. This is exactly what I wanted for them. I could cry. <laughs> A massive thank you to Harry and Meghan for their unwavering commitment to purpose and the brave use of their resources. Can I just say, mission accomplished. The event was a resounding success, graced by dignitaries and influential figures. The story shared even led to proposed legislation to protect children online. Now that's what I call results, not the performative nonsense that some people do. The proposed legislations include Stop Addictive Feeds Exploitation for Kids Act 
and New York Child Data Protection Act. Now let's shift our focus to their creative ventures, okay? Prince Harry's Despair has been making waves and is even up for a Grammy nomination. The Heart of the Invictus had been shortlisted in the eSports Insider Film Festival. The deadline for voting was 9th October. I don't have news of how that works, but the fact that they were nominated at all says a lot. I mean, who would have thought that Prince Harry would be a potential Grammy winner? And don't get me started on the cataclysmic impact of suits. Netflix, right, is over the moon with its success and is hunting for more gems. <laughs> Netflix also reports that they have added nearly 9 million new subscribers in its Suits quarter. I mean, they should send fruits to the cast of Suits for their role in boosting their numbers. Just saying. Then you have Nielsen's tweeting that Suits is standing strong at the number two spot this week with 1.9 million minutes viewed across Netflix and Peacock. It remains the top show among acquired content. And speaking of success, have you seen the funny tweet about the royal family being stunned by Meghan Markle's net worth? <laughs> oh my God. Honestly, women, we need to take tips from Meghan Markle about how to add value to yourself before you get married. To top it all off, we have the Archwell Foundation Insight Report for Parents and Children, showcasing professionalism at its finest. When you organize an event of this magnitude, supported by contributions, sponsors, and partners, and when people dedicate their time to participate, it's crucial to demonstrate the event's true value. It's sort of like the Oscars of philanthropy, okay? You have to show some value for making everyone sacrifice their time and resources towards your own event. As Harry and Meghan's success story unfolded, the naysayers couldn't resist revealing their true colors online. Some journalists were caught bickering on Twitter about the truthfulness or not of Prince William's cheating rumors. Our favorite Karen, who appears to lead the derangers, more or less admitted that Prince William's cheating rumors were true. <laughs> and Catherine Phillips, a diplomatic correspondent for the Times newspaper, dropped some intriguing comments on Twitter that demand our attention. She said, it's no secret that certain courtiers briefed against Meghan and Harry, and it's no secret who they were representing. Everyone in the press knew. So I fully expect all of that to be in the Netflix documentary. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Just hold on. Let's reflect on the noise around Harry and Meghan's project. Let's starting with the iconic Oprah interview, the Harry and Meghan documentary, The Spare. Was that uproar? genuine or was it largely media orchestration in fact you know what don't even answer the question i'll answer it for you that was the media inciting the public against harry and Meghan. the media's real issue with this project lies in the fact that harry and Meghan were uncovering the media's tactics and consequently diminishing its power over the royal family along with its ability to profit from harry and Meghan. The media just couldn't handle being outsmarted by Harry and Meghan. The media's push for Harry's return to the UK is primarily about control, especially as they're pushing for Harry to return without Meghan, because they know that as an American citizen, they cannot gain co absolute control over Meghan the way that they have done over the British royal family. They keep fighting Harry because they can see that he is attempting to release the rest of the royal family from the media's grip. Now, let's shift our attention to the hilarious updates on Harry and Meghan's profile on the royal family's website. I won't delve too deeply into this since I have already discussed it in detail in my previous video. If you haven't seen that video yet, please do so now. The link is available in the comment section. 
Honestly, it's like a secret comedy show hidden on the royal family's website. It's safe to say that Harry and Meghan are far from being the irrelevant royals the media proclaim them to be. <laughs> Can we just say that success has many fathers, brothers, and in-laws? Another funny discovery was this excerpt of an interview someone had held with Lord Colin Campbell discussing Lady Colin Campbell, the so-called British aristocrat with a YouTube channel, the knockoff Mish Havisham from Great Expectations. So this is what he said in the interview, right? He said, if I could offer any advice to the other contestants in the jungle, it would be to avoid her at all costs. <laughs> he went on to say, she can seem charming and lovely, but in my opinion, she's a monster. I think she's a crushing snob and a complete fake. She keeps claiming to be related to the royal family through me. How does that work? I'm not related to the queen, not at all. <laughs> I used to get infuriated by her hate-filled rhetoric, but no more after her husband completely eathered her. So shifting our focus to the successes court cases, Byline Times deserves praise for exposing GB News' pension for personal attacks on members of the public. So the article with the headline, Confessions of a News of the World Reporter, Whistleblowing for Prince Harry, unveiled the underhanded blackmail tactics used by journalists, granting newspapers control over politicians and public figures. This corroborates everything Prince Harry has been saying and forms the legal basis of his legal battles with the media. Do you remember this quote from Prince Harry? Our country is judged globally by the state of our press and our government, both of which I believe are at rock bottom. Harry and Meghan are vindicated. See what this says here, for the Lord will vindicate his people and will have compassion on his servants. I don't know what religion they both follow or whether they follow any religion at all, but basically they are doing the God's, they are doing God's work. And so God will definitely have mercy on them and he's showing his mercy already. Furthermore, a tweet confirms that the court granted Megan's motion to dismiss her case against Samantha Markle. While there might be more unmentioned victories, we'll take a pause on the victory run for now. We'll just turn our attention to Harry and Meghan's commitment to uplifting their community of friends. Let's kick things off with Afua Hirsch's new book, Decolonizing My Body. I've already got my hands on a copy. People often wonder why there isn't more vocal support for Harry and Meghan in the UK, especially from more high profile members of the public, celebrities and whatnot. We've all witnessed what's been thrown Harry and Meghan's way and the attempts to tarnish their image. It's undeniable that without the resources they possess, their stories might have unfolded very differently. Last but not least, Omid Scobie's upcoming book, Endgame. I just placed a pre-order for it while working on this video. The book is set to be released on November 21st. Remember, Harry and Meghan can't do it all alone. So let's support those who support them under the principle of the friend of my friend is my friend. <laughs> Just like the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. Now for some fantastic news to celebrate. GB News asked Dan Wooten, guys, how did you all celebrate? How did you feel the day you heard this news? Some people say they remember where they were when JF Kennedy and Princess Diana died. To me, this news had a similar level of impact. Anyway, I'll stop this video here. What was your best bit of good news? Do you guys like this kind of content? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Keep focused on your goals, friends. Keep shining and keep thriving. Until next time, take care. Bye.